So once we're in the glenohumeral joint, the first structure that we're looking for is the biceps tendon. And in this 59-year-old lady, we can see there's substantial damage to her biceps tendon, so it does not look normal. There's fraying of the biceps, and part of the tendon itself has rolled back towards the glenohumeral joint. We can then look at the other structures of the shoulder that we're less concerned about, so we make sure and do a thorough examination. So we'll look at the posterior labrum, and this uh, patient has some osteophytes that are already developing, consistent with osteoarthritis. We'll look down the back of her shoulder. We can look down into the back compartment of the shoulder joint. We'll look over towards the humeral articulating surface. And then in a beach chair position, if we abduct and put a little traction on the arm, we can bring in the rotator cuff attachment and visualize this. Here is the bare area in the back of the humerus. Now here's the top of the bare area. Now this is an important landmark, and we'll come to this when we get to the subacromial space. The top of the bare area actually marks the leading edge or the most superior edge of the infraspinatus within three to five millimeters. So if you have a massive tear that involves both the supraspinatus and the infraspinatus, and you're not exactly sure where the infraspinatus should go, if you put the leading edge or superior edge of the infraspinatus to the top of the bare area, then you'll have an anatomic repair of your infraspinatus. So that's an important landmark. But certainly there is a hole in the rotator cuff that we see here consistent with a full thickness rotator cuff tear, and we'll come back on that. So it involves the entire supraspinatus as it's coming around the backside, but maybe just the leading edge of the infraspinatus. We'll get a better appreciation of that in the subacromial space. There are two ways to develop an anterior portal. One is from outside in using an 18-gauge needle. If your landmarks are fairly accurate, you come off the lateral edge of the coracoid process. You come down with an 18-gauge needle, and then you identify the spot in the rotator interval that you'd like to place your, your portal. So this is one way to do that. I have found that uh, the most consistent way to get it in a place where, where, uh, where we want to put the portal is to do it from the inside out. So identifying the structures, there's a subscapularis, the biceps tendon, there's the glenoid labrum and glenoid, there's the triangle that we call the rotator interval. That band that we see just underneath or inferior to the biceps is the superior glenohumeral ligament. So what we're going to do to establish our anterior portal, in this case we just want a standard anterior portal, is we'll go right in the middle of this triangle and we'll just push forward with our arthroscope. We'll turn our flow off from our pump. I'll hold the cannula in place and then we'll use a metal rod that has a blunt tip to it. This is called a Wissinger rod and we'll pass that through our cannula into the anterior capsule and there's a slight lateral push when we go through the capsule to keep it lateral to the coracoid process. And we'll pop through and then you can see we came out pretty much where our mark was and we're lateral to the coracoid. We'll take our knife and make our incision. We'll insert our metal rod through there. And then the other thing I like to do is I like to take my cannula and push it all the way across the glenohumeral joint, which helps to dilate up that anterior capsule. We'll then take a clear colored cannula. We'll insert this over the top of our metal rod and we'll advance this into the glenohumeral joint. And what I'd like to do is go all the way in. So we know that's too far. So then what we'll do is we'll find the center point. I'll back out the rod with my right hand and as the two cannulas separate, we then pass point them together so they stay within the glenohumeral joint. We finished with the glenohumeral joint and now we're going into the subacromial space. What we're going to do is we're going to go to the back part of the acromion. We'll feel for that edge of the acromion and then we're going to go slightly underneath it and then to assist with sliding across the glenohumeral joint without going through the rotator cuff, we'll put a little traction on the arm We'll stay right on the edge of the acromion, and then as we move forward, we can actually feel it pop into place, and then we have free mobility, and this is going to be in the subacromial space or the subacromial bursa. Once we're in the subacromial space, I like to go ahead and take our Wissinger rod, pass it through our cannula, drop below the coracoacromial ligament, and come out of our anterior portal. The advantage of doing that is I can establish my outflow right away, which again should help with my visualization. Now, the subacromial space is a more anterior structure. 
So if I had to draw that out, I would go, I would bisect the acromion, and then it's going to come down off the edge of the acromion in this area here. That's your subacromial space. So we want our posterior cannula to be a little bit more forward and our anterior portals to be backed out a little bit to make sure we're in the right spot.